their scavenger hunt. Cute little gift. What social skills would you like to see developed? That is an important one. It pretty much goes by in a blur and then you leave really, really tired. Hey sweet friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maylene Call from Mrs. Call's Campers. If you're new here, I am a first grade teacher. I post weekly vlogs and right now we are in the middle of classroom setup, classroom prep. I actually just connected all of my kids and families on Class Dojo, so it's all feeling really real. Um, but today I wanted to do a meet the teacher prep video with you. I wanted to hang out and just get some good old fashioned prep done. So the first little tip that I wanna share is is be organized with your computer files and whatever you are using this year save it in a folder that's called beginning of year <laughs> so I have a classroom folder on my computer and in it I have a folder for BOY beginning of year and that was helpful for me this year because I just had to go into last year's folder and make a copy of everything that I did and I didn't have to wonder what I worked on. I had it all right there. So everything that I'm putting the student's name on is saved in here. My labels are saved in here. We have dismissal tags. We have uh, my brochure for Meet the Teacher, my back to school gift for students. This year I also made a Meet the Teacher gift that's different. Last year I did a Gushers situation. This year I'm using Annie's gummy bunnies. They're, all of Annie's things are bunnies, but they're the little gummies because they don't have any like artificial dyes and things like that because one of my kids last year at Meet the Teacher couldn't have um, something that was in the Gushers and I felt so bad. So I'm going with Annie's this year some of the gift tags where is it this is going to be the front and then i'm going to print this on the back it's like a little joke but i'm going to put the gummies on so they have to lift the gummies for the answer hopefully i can hunt down some white cardstock we've got plenty of white cardstock so off to the press as we go i'm going to start by printing this heart poem you know i should have warmed up the laminators Oh well. This is the back to school. It's not me or teacher, but it is first day of school. So I'm gonna prep it. Um, but it's a little heart poem. Give them this little wooden heart. You'll see it's so cute. Everything I prep for students, I do make extras of just for when students inevitably come later in the year. That includes the first day of school kind of gifts for them too. Oh, so cute. Let's get the laminators powered up. are laminated and cut hearts linked in my Amazon storefront for you if you're not physically watching and you're just listening it says I'm excited to see all that you do first grade is great but it's better with you I know we just met but as your teacher I know this year will be great keep this heart to hold somewhere special somewhere safe because in my heart I saved you a place welcome to first grade love mrs. call this is in my Google Drive and it's editable so you can put your name at the bottom and I just attach these little wooden hearts with tape one day I saw one of my my parents her she had this hanging from a little string in her rearview mirror in her car and I thought that was so sweet so they can do whatever they want with it I just tape it I'm gonna work on my about me bags I actually haven't done these since my first year of teaching it's always something that I've forgotten to do but it just says Please bring three items to share with the class. Help your child choose things that they feel best represent them. They can also decorate their bag. And then I give them some ideas, like something their favorite color, a special picture, a toy, something I like to do, a piece of art, wrapper from a favorite snack. So this just goes on a brown paper bag. About me bags are finished. Cut out these little tags. I have to put together my gifts for the night before first grade. This is not something I've done before. At my very first school, we did home visits. Everybody in the school buddied up with another teacher or like a literacy coach or someone. It was really awesome. It was just something that everybody did. And you put all the addresses in like MapQuest and it creates a route for you and we would stop by and we just had these little brown paper bags. 
of, um, I think it was just like a bag of candy that someone had put together. You didn't even have to put it together. They were already done for you. And just went to the house. You didn't go inside, just like on the porch. You said, hello, I'm gonna be your new teacher. Dropped off the bag and headed over to the next house. And so I did a Donors Choose project because one of the girls who was student teaching with us last year in first grade, she was talking about how these books were really cheap and so I looked at the night before first grade and it was really cheap so it's like let me put a donors choose product together for project together for just like a little goodie bag so I threw a couple of extra things in there so I'll make those with you because I did send out a message on dojo today to my parents just saying like hey I'm excited for the year and then just mentioning the optional home visit because it's not something everybody at our school here does it is something that Ron Clark encourages his staff to do or he might even require them <laughs> to do it there also I'm not really sure our school does take a lot of inspiration from Ron Clark Academy and I know that our school did it during COVID they did little home visits but I don't think anybody does it anymore. Babies by hand. I'm not laminating these because I'm just handing these out at Meet the Teacher. The way Meet the Teacher works at our school is there's obviously a time frame where parents can come by at any time. They don't have to be there at a certain time. They can come anytime within that window and they come into the classroom and get any anything that we want to give them. We have dismissal tags that they'll get and I give them usually my brochure. I have them scan QR codes for forms that I'll show you later on in this video and then um, they drop off supplies so I just section off places in my room for them to put supplies and they drop those off I usually have the kids do a write the room to kind of find things and it helps keep them a little bit occupied and then um, the parents have to fill out like computer permission forms media forms things like that a lot of teachers have a slideshow playing i usually just have like a single slide and i have all my kids sign in because that's a procedure that i start on the very first day so all of my students names are projected in my powerpoint slide they're projected on my board and so as i meet them i'll come show them like hey like come sign your name in let me show you how to do that and it pretty much goes by in a blur and then you leave really really tired I remember last year for me it felt super super rushed so this year I've got you know gotten ahead of the game so in my last vlog or maybe in a reel that I posted I kind of gave you a glimpse of this little bag but I'm gonna explain it so this is what I made a donors choose project for these books I think were like $2.99 on Amazon so not something that I wanted to buy 25 of or 24 of but there's a book and then I decided to make it kind of like a starry like nighttime theme so a little bracelet that has clouds on it, a pencil that has stars, and a sleeping mask. I think I'll put my students' names on the Rice Krispie Treats. And then on the back, a little QR code that has me reading the book to them. So I think I need to start by writing their names on the Rice Krispies. And then it'll be easy for me to see who has gotten theirs and who hasn't gotten theirs yet. Obviously, I can't show you this part. Names oh, are on. My camera died, but I did get all of the bags done. I can kind of show you a little glimpse again. I got them all stuffed. I do need to tape them closed. Um, but yeah, overall, we were super productive today. I'm going to be able to knock everything else out tomorrow and kind of show you some of the digital things. So I'm going to go home, but you will see me in a second. Okay, so I did get the bunnies, um, which some of these actually have... A different design on them that's okay I also purchased tool because I forgot I wanted to make my students bookmarks with their names on it um, and I wanted to give those to them whenever we started with AR AR is something that they do at my school um, and some of them are familiar with it in kindergarten but not all of them I'm also getting messages um, from parents on class dojo I got it all set up yesterday which I have a whole video doing that with you if you want to see I'll show you the bookmarks use a template and then just kind of tweaked it a little bit let me make a new page and put my name on it instead of students name you'll be able to tell better when I print them but they're super cute my name and I want to put tool I think I do I don't know like hole punch it and have like tool at the top I did go ahead and pre-cut these because I want them to be durable um, before I laminate them. I almost never cut laminate cut but, and I'm going to use the hack where you take just this glue is dried up 
a little bit of glue and it helps secure it on your laminating sheet. I just can't decide if I want to put the ribbon on or if I just want to leave them. It's kind of girly. Or I might just ask them if they want one, you know, and yeah. I can always do it later because I kind of like them as they are. If they want tool, I can add it on for them later. Um, so bookmarks are done. I think I want to tape them because if I staple them, oh, they fit. Ugh. If only the joke was a little higher, I can just put it lower. done. I'm going to go ahead and put them up at the front of the room where this little wooden thing lives and that's where I'll hand them out too. I'll just leave this over here. Okay so all of this stuff that needs to be prepped I think is mostly done. I do need to put the papers into my bee binders for the parents. Just to recap I have my back to school meet the teacher brochure. I'll actually show you inside. You open it up there's a section about me, um, the homework policy, we're in a homework school, um, things that they can do at home, about our classroom is in the middle, and then goals, which this is in their bee binder, this little goal sheet, um, and then the back has, oh wait, nothing. So, smidge of information to answer some of their questions. I just want it to be something simple. Little bookmarks, these are free, everything right now is free. These were the first day gifts. Um, the hearts come in a pack of 30, and so for each kid, this is only like a 50 cent gift. About me bags, these are free. These I did a donors choose project for, for the home visits, so I didn't have to pay anything, and if I did have to do it myself, I would not put all of this in here. I would do like a treat and maybe like a bracelet or a pencil or something, something small like that. And then the bunny gifts comes out to, I think it was, I did the math on all of this, $14.33 for a pack of 24, so 60 cents a piece. So that's how much these cost. I haven't spent any money. My school has cardstock. I didn't have to buy the cardstock. I have a colored printer at school. I also use HP Instant Ink at home to print things in color, which is really nice for back to school. Oh, but I didn't have to. So <laughs> I've really spent like a dollar per kid showing you everything that I'm showing you here. I just didn't want anybody to watch this and think like, I'm spending a lot of money because I'm not. Now let's go back to the digital side of things. So do the bookmarks I made in Canva. I also decided this year, I don't wanna send home a weekly newsletter. I've done it every single year except this past year. Oh, my camera battery. So typically every year I've done a classroom newsletter and I would send that out either on the Friday or Sunday before the school week started. I'll show you an example. Here it is. This is available for you on Teachers Pay Teachers. And what I used to do is I would send this out every week as a paper copy. I actually didn't do it this past year though. And I realized one of the reasons that I just didn't want to do it is because you have to send it out like the week of. So I just had the idea to make a little weekly recap that I can send to parents on Class Dojo at the end of every week or not even at the end of every week. I did design a weekly recap and then I was like, well, that seems like a lot of pressure to have to make sure that I send that out every single week because you know how some weeks are shorter, like you're learning the same thing for a few weeks in a row. I decided that I would just do a class recap and highlight the important skills and then share that on Class Dojo on Fridays. But I feel like this makes way more sense because sometimes you could put out a weekly newsletter and then let's say you guys don't get to something, then it looks like you taught that when maybe you didn't teach it. But if you just say, hey, this is what we did this week, I feel like it's a lot quicker and it makes more sense. So here's what the recap looks like. I have a section for reading, math, writing, phonics, a little note section, a section that I can use for whatever I want and then for birthdays and my goal is to try to put this out on Fridays or if it's a short week you know every couple of weeks but that way the parents can see what we're working on as a whole class because obviously they're getting work that their child is doing um, individually but sometimes that's different than what the entire class is doing so this is just a brief hey these are the skills we're working on I did make the template in Canva. I'm going to share it with you in my Google Drive link just as a PowerPoint so you can edit that yourself. Let me know what you think and if you've done something like this and just didn't tell me because I wish you had told me. I'm going to look back on and see if I have anything for Meet the Teacher last year because I know I had something up on the board but I don't remember what it said. Oh and I have to show you the QR codes for parents. So let me cover up the QR codes from last year just so nobody can get to them. Definitely have a sign-in sheet at the bare, don't forget, I feel like that's something that everybody always forgets. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and print my sign-in sheet now, since we are getting ready for Meet the Teacher, which is next Friday. 
today's Thursday. Sign and sheet, done. Just have that up on a clipboard at the front of the room. I don't do, I don't know if I've already said this, I don't do stations because it's just not my style. <laughs> like meet the teacher does not have to be extravagant or crazy. Mine is very simple. So the parents will come in, I'll greet them, they'll sign in, and then I just have things laying on all the tables with the student's name on it. There's a spot, so if you do name tags, you'll put everything the parents need right at that student's desk or location. And the parents can sign papers that they need right there. It's not like a mad hunt around the room to do this and then do that. It's just all in one spot. Um, and then for the kids, I do a write the room. I might have already told you that, but I just have them find the library and write library, find the table. So literally just like the picture and they have to find the picture and they copy something, which is also really helpful for you to see because some kids still come in kindergarten struggling to copy a word or like write on the line. And I don't think I even have anything crazy up on the board. Okay, here's exactly what I had up on the board last year. I have student names at the bottom, so I'm gonna cover those. So it is very simple and straightforward. It is nothing fancy. Sign in, complete the scavenger hunt with your child, complete paperwork, take the brochure and the green dismissal sign. That's literally it. That's all I had up. Having them do the scavenger hunt really keeps everybody from trying to talk to you all at once, all at the same time. I also have the supplies stationed sorted out so they can just see to drop off supplies i'm not gonna say sort supplies because they have the supplies they know they're gonna sort them <laughs> so it is very simple i think um sometimes people make a big deal for meet the teacher and in a lot of schools like i'm lucky that i met almost every single student last year at meet the teacher but that's just kind of our community there have been times before where i've only had a couple of parents show up and a lot of you might be in that same situation so there's no point in making like a huge to-do about it when it's supposed to just be simple. And I found the scavenger hunt I used last year, so I'm going to go ahead and print that off. I don't think this is something I can really share with you just because I don't have all of the pictures that you'll need in your own classroom. Just for some inspiration, I'll show you what it looked like in kindergarten because obviously it's a lot harder for kindergartners to just walk around the room and write down a million things, so I just had them check off when they found something. Um, and that was fine. So there's some inspiration for you. The other thing is I have three Google Forms for my parents to fill out and I like for them to at least have access to it on Meet the Teacher Night so if they wanted to they could quickly get it done. First Google Form is student information. The second Google Form is volunteers and the third Google Form is social media. Do a little screen recording just so you can see what I put on the forms for you but the screen recording for the student information, student's name, then like whatever their relationship, three words to describe this child, what motivates the student, what upsets this child, what do they find comforting, what are their personal interests, what are their strengths, what social skills would you like to see developed? That is an important one. Do you have any goals for them this year? Check the statements that are correct. So asking about how the student saw their experience at school last year, it is really good to know if they, you know, if they didn't enjoy kindergarten or they need a really structured environment or they love to move. Are there any factors that seem to interfere with their learning? Is there a freshener okay in our class? Classroom. Is there anything else you would like me to know? And I got some really, really good responses from this um, every single year that I've done it. So there's that one. And then really good to put out feelers on if you have any parents who can help volunteer in your classroom. So this might look a little different for you, but I just have them put the student's name. Um, and then can you help prep for our classroom at school? Do you want to take things home to prep? Um, would you like to come in and be, I call them a magic mom. It's whenever the students are reading, they can help them fine. They can help them figure out words and things like that. It's just a time when moms come in and the students are reading and they can kind of help. And I've had a dad come one time. We did have a dad last year, which was exciting. Um, asking if they want to help with class parties and any other comments and leaving that space at the bottom for comments is helpful because you'll have parents who are like, oh, I'm available every day after two or, oh, if you need help with this, let me know. So this year, the one I'm putting out is a bit more specific. Um, I have a mom who comes in and preps for me every single week. So I put like, hey, at 1.30, would you be available for 30 minutes or so? And I also include fingerprinting information right on the form because that's usually a follow-up question. I tell them only fill it out if you are interested in volunteering. If you know that you are working full-time and you just cannot do any volunteering, that's okay. You do not have to fill it out. Um, and then the next one or the last one was social media. They have separate forms for the school, making sure that they can show up on our school's social media because our school has social media and making sure that they can be in things in like the yearbook. So I ask permission if I can share photos or videos of their 
child and say like, this might include crafts or writing? Do I have permission to share photos of them on social, my, social media? And then I tell them that I have a teaching channel on YouTube and ask if they're okay with their voice or image being shared. So I make sure I have all of that um, and that parents are aware of it and it's not something that I do in secret. Those are all of the forms and I just turn them into QR codes and then parents can scan it. I actually give it to them with the brochure. Go ahead and make an example bee binder just to show you what it looks like all put together. I think I am going to make just a short reel just so you can access quickly so maybe you've already seen it but if you are just a YouTube girl hanging out with me. Oh, here's the binder again I don't know if I mentioned it but this is a product I have in my teachers pay teachers you'll get this template you just have to edit the names. They have their name on the front. I already showed you I put their number on the side. When you open it up there's a pocket right here. You can use this for parent notes if you want to. This year tried a monthly reading bingo. It was really popular with some of my kids and some of my kids not as much. But that's really nice to just stick in here if that's something you're interested in doing. And I asked the parents to just initial whenever they completed something. So for my class this doesn't start till September and this is by a teacher and her cat. Then you have the yellow folder. So when I'm collecting student binders in the morning, I can actually just easily open it. So return to school site is where any notes or things that I need are and keep at home is something that we put their papers in on Friday. This is what goes in the sheet protectors. All about our binder, class info, sight words, secret stories, secret stories, sight words, sight words. I'll also have the kids bring me their binder just to like see how they're doing. And then 120 chart in here as well. And they can write on this too. Then I put a little divider here. I was really good about this last year, but I would send home fluency passages. I'm going to be so much better about this about that this year. Also, um, I had a student last year who was working on goals in the classroom and they had a sheet we would go over every day. So I just popped that right in the front. If you have a student who's working on goals, that way your parents can see it. But the binder is really nice because it's super durable and it keeps everything all in one spot. So I love it. Okay, I went ahead and put all of these scavenger hunts on clipboards just so the kids can just grab one and do it. And those are set up by the front of the room so they'll walk in their parents will sign in I'll say hello ask them what their name is then like I said my kids sign in every morning on the board I'm gonna have them write their name on the board really it's tracing their name um, and that's how I take attendance but after they sign in on the board I'll give them their scavenger hunt name at the top. They'll look around the room for these cards. I just put them on sticky clips and I'll make sure the parents know that they might need a little bit of help. Um, and then I have one. I have one that has a star. I had one. I think I lost it. Okay, so I do need to reprint one, but I'll put that on our turn in then. So the bottom of the scavenger hunt, it says turn in here. There's a star. I think that might be the one the only one I need to reprint. That is our turn in basket. So I'm not gonna hang these up yet, but, and then after they turn it in, they get a little treat. That's everything for Meet the Teacher. I do have a couple things I need to put away. I'm not gonna do that with you on camera cause that's not fun. Just a couple things back here on this shelf that I'll make look nice and pretty for Meet the Teacher. I have all my stuff organized right here for now. Um, and I think I will, my goal is to do a reel for Meet the Teacher just to kind of show you what the room looks like with everything set out. You're watching this before, so let me know if you have any questions before that reel comes out um, or anything else that you need help with or want to see. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Like it if you had fun or if it was helpful. Subscribe, enjoy the family down below, and I'll see you in the next one.